Hi folks, this is Alan. Today we're going to be doing the iPad 1 uh, screen replacement and LCD replacement. The tools you're going to need are an, a Torx number 4, a wedge tool, I prefer the iSesimo, a knife, a couple of spudgers, and some wedge tools to keep the LCD separated once we get going. The first thing we want to do is take our new iCracked digitizer that's sealed in plastic for protection and we want to line it up next to the iPad 1. The reason we want to do that is because there are clips along the edge here that hold the digitizer into place. We want to pry where those are. As always we do a pre uh, repair checklist. We make sure everything is working, make sure the digitizer is working, make sure the home button's working, the power button, and also the volume button. Once we know that everything's working, we go ahead and, as always, power the unit down. You hold the power button down until you slide that over and wait for it to go completely asleep. On the iPad 1, there are certain areas you want to be very careful with. You don't want to damage when you take your wedge tool to get the screen out. The first one is the SIM card holder. You don't want to get in there and damage that. The 3G antenna along the top. The audio jack on the left side the power button, the volume button, and the lock mute button, and also on the bottom, the dock connector and the external speaker. This whole area in here you want to be very careful with. I always like to start on the bottom left-hand side, and I notice as I line up my new screen that there is a clip right there. Take my wedge tool in, and you want to get in between the rubber gasket and the metal, not the rubber gasket and the glass. And you very carefully slide that up. And if you can get enough room right away, before you get to the SIM card, you go ahead and put in a wedge tool. You want to keep it separated because it will try to slip back down in there. And you'll have done all that work for nothing. As you hold some pressure on this, you again notice where those are lined up and you just keep moving down the screen. You can feel the clips as they pop off. Oftentimes, as you go to pry the clips off, you will feel them break. That's fine. Our new screen comes with clips already attached to it. You just want to be sure when you go through and remove the screen to also remove any clips that may be on there. I'm going to go ahead and place another wedge right there to keep the screen from falling back in. I'm going to go up and around this corner very carefully. I'm going to go back down here to the bottom real quick, very carefully. Place that in there so we hold it up. I'm going to go ahead and spin this around. So we can see what we're doing and we're going to spin around our new digitizer as well. And as you notice on the top of the iPad one, there are no clips in this area. It will still be pried in there, but we want to wait until we get the bottom and both sides off first before we do anything up here. I look at my clip and I notice that right in here is the next clip on the digitizer below the power and volume button. We don't want to get nowhere near those. Very carefully pry up and get in between the clip. As you're doing this, you do not want to pry up too hard. You don't want to damage the LCD, which is part of this unit. If you warp it, you can bend it and deform it. You can feel the clip pop free and you know you're doing good. Never force anything, as always with any product repair, never force it, never gouge it, never stab at it. Just keep moving along, and if you have to go around two or three times, that's perfectly fine. As you can see, this unit is coming up nice and easy. Hopefully, yours will come up as easily as well. But sometimes we just got to keep playing with it. And be very careful with this bottom speaker, very careful with the dot connector. I'm 
going to take our time getting in between the rubber gasket and the metal frame. You don't want to do damage the, the rubber gasket, but if you do, that's fine. You're getting a new one on your new digitizer anyway. As you can see, one of the clips stayed on, and that's what they look like. It's popped out over the edge, and that's good. We've got a few more clips along the left side here, and that's where we're going to start. We're going to lift this up just a little bit to disconnect this digitizer antenna. So we're going to go along here. There's a few more little spots here where we need to pry up those same clips as we see down here. Again, it doesn't have to look like that, but sometimes it does. We've got one right there. It's just about to come out. So we're going to go ahead and take our pry tool. And again, not putting too much pressure, not gouging, and not warping that LCD. We're going to lift this up to try to get it to a clamshell so we can start disconnecting the cables. Go ahead and pry up over on this side a little bit. So now we've got the screen completely separated. The first connection we want to take off again is the digitizer connection. As you can see, it's folded up underneath and ties to the logic board. We take our spudger tool and as we separate it up a little bit, there's two black clips, one here and one here that we lift up in order to get the digitizer cable out. So we go ahead and we pop those doors open and we very gently slide the digitizer cable loose. Once we remove the digitizer cable, the next cable is the light sensor cable. It's located in the middle and it's folded up accordion style much like this. It's hard to see in this location, but you just pop it off just like that. The next connection is the wife or is the 3G antenna connection. It's one small round cable that we just pop off like that. And we can go ahead and again open it up just a little bit more. And the third connection to remove the digitizer assembly is the LCD connector. Make note how it sits right around the battery and make sure when you put it back in, it goes back in just like that. You don't want it sitting on top of the battery or it'll deform the LCD and you'll have a bad image. The LCD is connected right here on the logic board underneath this small tab. Just lift it up and it pops right up. You need to very carefully remove the cable that's held in with a little bit of adhesive and slowly pry it free. Take that free and you can now set the digitizer assembly aside. Now that we've got the digitizer assembly completely separated from the, the iPad itself, we can set that aside in a safe place. Now we'll take a look at what we've got here. The LCD is inside of the digitizer frame and it is held in by six uh, torque number four screws. We need to remove those. Once we remove those, we still need to be very careful because it is wedged in very tightly into this frame. So let's go ahead and remove these screws. This screw right here is holding down the 3G antenna. You want to make sure that you line that back up when you put it back together. Now that we have the six screws out, 
we can take our knife and get underneath the screw connectors. And we very gently start to pry the LCD up. You can use your wedge tools to help hold it up. A neat little tip, if you're not sure if the unit you're repairing is a 3G unit or not, you can order the 3G screen and just cut this antenna off if you don't need it, if you do not have a 3G unit. Otherwise, they're exactly the same unit. Continue around, carefully prying up as we go. Once we start to have it pried up, we want to remove the light sensor. Let's hold on with a small adhesion. You're going to use this light sensor on the new screen, so you want to be very careful when removing it. Go ahead at this time and remove the adhesion for the 3G antenna. Now, if you feel like it's moving, but it's really stuck on there, you can always use a heat gun. You want to very, be very gentle. But if the adhesive is really sticking, you can use a little bit of heat to warm it up to loosen it. Go ahead and get that out of the way and very carefully Very gingerly lift the unit out. We've almost got it. You don't want to do anything to gouge the LCD. Very carefully, without bending the tabs, lift it up and out. So now we've got our new digitizer that we use as a guide. And as you notice, there's protective film on the inside and protective film on the outside. We want to make sure we remove the protective film on the inside and also if we're installing a new LCD, we want to take the protective film off of it as well. So, go ahead and take it from the corner there and once you remove it, you do not want to touch the digitizer. Very careful not to damage the cable. And if you notice, there's a few little pieces of it along the edge. Go ahead and remove all of it. And those already came out, but you wanna make sure they're all gone. So the next step is to take the protective film off of the LCD. you have to use a knife, be very, very careful just to get a corner lifted up just enough to get a hold of it. Notice how I'm not touching it with my fingers at all. All right. So now we want to make sure that these screw holes line up correctly. The two that are really close together go on the top and you slide it in underneath the cables. The 3G antenna cable and the Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, the digitizer cable. And it should fit right in there nice and snugly. Want to make sure that the LCD connector here does not come off. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat. Now, go ahead and remove the adhesive protectant on the 3G antenna and fold it into place. And as I stated earlier, if you've got a 3G model digitizer, but you don't have a 3G model iPad, you can cut this antenna off and just leave this in place, no harm done. So we go around 
installing the six screws. When you do the 3D antenna, make sure that it's all lined up properly. That'll help keep it in place. And you go to put the digitizer back on. Okay. All right. Now that we've got the LCD in place, we need to go ahead and put the light sensor back on. Notice this little plastic piece that sticks out. Occasionally, this piece will fall off and stay on the old digitizer unit. You need to make sure to save that and put it back in right there so the light sensor works properly. It just slips right in and put the adhesive right back down. Now we're ready to put the LCD and the digitizer back onto the main unit of the iPad. We're going to do it in reverse order with the LCD antenna first, then the 3G, then the light sensor, then finally the digitizer cable. You want to line it up so the 3G antenna hooks onto the logic board. This antenna connection is very fragile and you want to be very gentle with it when you force it, when you push it down onto the logic board. As you can see, the connection is right there on the upper right portion of the logic board. And now we've got the 3G antenna in. The next connection is going to be for the LCD. We want to make sure that it goes around the battery and lies nice and flat in the little channel that's provided for it. We take it, make sure that the clip is open, and gently and evenly Slide it into place. You can take your spudger if you need to. To help align it. Once it's in place, you can set your LCD down. You want to make sure it's all the way in. And once it's in, you can set that tab firmly back into place. So the next connection is a light sensor. The connector goes from here to right there on the logic board. You need to have it in a, the digitizer kind of in a clam shape and just pop it right on. You can fill it connect really well and it lines up evenly with that connector below it. Now, the only connector you have to worry about is the digitizer. This one is already folded up nice and neatly, and you want to do the same with the digitizer. Again, make sure both the hinges are open and up, and slide the two connections in together. Align them up. Until they both are in all the way and the white dotted line is even up to there. And go ahead and close both of the hinges. Take the cable and fold it like that. And then we just set the digitizer in place. We don't connect it yet because we want to make sure everything is working. So we go ahead and power it on. And we'll test all the connections except for the home button. The home button needs to be completely down for it to work. So the unit powers on. We go ahead and check the digitizer, punch in the secret passcode, and test everything 
and everything looks like it's working great. Now, the final step to complete this process is to get the digitizer into place. You want to set it over the unit evenly all the way around. You're going to try to press it down straight and even and get all these clips to go in as much at the same time as possible. Start over on the left hand side and very gently push down all the way across. Once you get one side in, you can very gently go across to the other. Making sure that we also get the top of the unit. So now that we've gone all the way around the edge and gotten all the clips in, we've got our iPad one all ready to go. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions, as always you can check out our website www.icrack.com.